Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about, so you want to learn medical coding fast. Watch this first. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, if you are brand new and you are new to researching medical coding, perhaps you're new to my channel, let me give you a little bit of background about myself. <laughs> I have been a medical coder for over 13 years. I currently hold two credentials with the American Health Information Management Association. I hold the Certified Coding Specialist and the Certified Coding Specialist Physician Based. I have been on the outpatient side of coding uh, for my entire career. However, I do know about the inpatient coding now, now that I have the mastery uh, medical coding credential, which is a CCS. And uh, I have my channel to be able to share information that I know about medical coding. My channel is for serious medical coders, for people who want to learn about the medical coding field. Now, when I hear, hey, Blue, I want to learn medical coding fast, how do I do it? Now, sometimes I'll hear this from my nursing folks. Sometimes I'll hear it from other uh, medical professionals that just kind of want to use their knowledge to kind of transition over to something easier, like medical coding, they think. Um, the thing is, if you have no background in medical or if you have background in medical, either way, you can still be a successful medical coder if you like to study. We study, we read. That is 90% of what we do. <laughs> The other part of it is we communicate a lot. And if you are a shy person, that's okay. You can be trained to overcome the shyness if you want to. Now, I am by nature a very shy person. I know. How how can I be shy? You you have a channel on blue on YouTube. You see you thousands of people see you. <laughs> how can you be shy? Oh, trust me. Trust me. But when it comes to something that I love and that is dear to me, like medical coding, this field of health information, all of that changes. But I want to take you guys through the list of the things that you, you should know. And you should know because this is stuff that, you know, either association, the American Health Information Management Association or the American Academy of Professional Coders, either one of these, they have their certification exams. And these are the things that they're going to be covering, right? Now, maybe not everything on this list, but this is what generally medical coders learn while they are in school or while they are independently studying because you don't even have to go through a program in order to be able to sit for one of these certification exams. You can train yourself, which I do have the uh, independent study video. If you're interested, um, I do have the independent study video out and you can look at it, get the books and study on your own. But okay, so here we go. I'm going to read you this list of all the things that you need to know. All right. This is what medical coders get taught, okay? So here we go. <laughs> Ready? Ready. Okay. Medical terminology, medical abbreviations, anatomy, pathophysiology, pharmacology, medical law and ethics, HIPAA, OIG, CMS, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. It's very important to us. Um, medical billing. Whether you're going to be a medical biller or not, you still have to learn medical billing. All medical coders learn medical billing because we are all tested on this. Whether you sit for an AHIMA credential or an AAPC credential, we're all tested on some form of reimbursement, okay? So in medical billing, you learn about commercial, private, government insurances, Medicare, Medicaid, claims processing, APCs, DRGs, MSDRGs, CMS 1500, Claim forms, co-pays, deductibles, accounts receivable, denials, insurance verification, prior authorization, edits, waste and abuse, RV, RVUs, and RBRBS. Then you have your ICD-10-CM. That's your diagnosis book, right? You have your guidelines, your principal and primary diagnosis, your secondary listed diagnoses. You have sequencing, history, and counter for service, combination codes, definitive diagnosis versus symptoms. So when do you pick these up? Uh, Long-term use. Injury codes, sequela, neoplasm table, table of, I can't say certain words, so I'm going to say medicines and chemicals. Um, external cause codes, risk adjustment, vascular families, 22 chapters that are in that book which cover infectious and parasitic diseases, neoplasms, blood and blood forming organs, endocrine, behavioral health, nervous, INN, nexa, ear and mastoid process, circulatory, respiratory, digestive, integumentary, um, musculoskeletal, genitourinary, uh, pregnancy, perinatal, congenital conditions, uh, signs and symptoms, injury, external causes, complications of surgery and medications, Z codes, um, diagnosis for diagnosis codes for special purposes, outpatient, profi, and inpatient coding rules. 
Then you have your CPT book. That's your current procedural terminology book. You have your E&M guidelines in there, 95 or 97. When an E&M gets captured, 26 chapters of E&M codes, new patient, established patient, consult patient, uh, surgery guidelines, anesthesia guidelines, global period, 0, 10, or 90 days. You need to know all of those. Uh, 84 different modifiers, surgeries, um, minor procedures, major procedures, uh, reduced procedures, global service, global period services, sequencing of procedures by weight, 49 place of service codes, add-on codes, indented codes, unlisted procedures, 11 code symbols, anesthesia, integumentary, musculoskeletal, respiratory, cardiovascular, digestive, urinary, male and female, uh, nervous system, eye and auditory, radiology, pathology, and laboratory supplies, uh, uh, okay, medicine, <laughs> category two and category three codes. Then you have your Higgs Picks level two. We have transport, uh, medical and surgical supplies, enteral and parenterial therapy, uh, outpatient PPS, DME, durable medical equipment, um, temporary procedure, professional service uh, codes, temporary service codes, um, treatment services, J codes, temporary codes, uh, orthopedic device or orthotic device, uh, prosthetic medical service, uh, quality measures, path and lab, Q codes, diagnostic and radiology, non-Medicare, T codes, vision codes, and hearing codes. Oh yeah, if you're sitting for the CCS, the CCA, or the CIC certification, you'll have to know about the inpatient side of the house, which brings you to another book, the ICD-10 PCS manual. And that, you're going to have to learn about your approaches, your body systems, your medical surgical section, obstetrics, placement, hospital acquired conditions, root operations, administration, measurement and monitoring, extracorporeal and systemic um, therapies, osteopathic, other procedures, chiropractic, uh, imaging, uh, nuclear medicine, radiation therapy, physical rehabilitation and diagnostic, audiology, um, mental health, substance abuse, and new technologies. A little over three minutes it took me to read that. All those things we have to know. So this is why I say, you can't learn this fast, folks. If you are trying to learn it fast, you're going to set yourself up to fail. Because even if you pass a, uh, the certification exam, which some people have told me, Blue, I really feel like I didn't learn anything in school except for how to pass the certification exam, which it does happen. But when you pass the certification exam, now here's the next step. You have to be out there and you have to be able to get a job. And now how do they test you in order to get a job, you have to take another test. Every place that you apply, they're gonna give you a proficiency test to see where you are and what your, your coding knowledge is. You may or may not have heard that uh, new medical coders get a hard time trying to get into the field. Unfortunately, this is a reality that we live in uh, currently. Uh, I would like to see things change. It's gonna take our leaders to change them, okay? So people who are in these management and leadership positions that are in charge of the hiring, I'm talking to you. My RHIAs and my RHITs that are in charge of all this hiring. Uh, when it's your time to hire people, consider hiring new medical coders because they are brand new. And if they have studied and not gone through these fast-paced medical coding programs, or even if they did, and they took the time to study additionally on their own and they're learning and they can pass a proficiency exam, give them a try. That's my advice there. I will always advocate for new medical coders. However, I will say this, if you're trying to speed through and, oh, I just want to be a medical coder, I'm a nurse, they'll hire me to be a medical coder. It doesn't necessarily mean that just because you get hired that they're going to see that, oh, you know how to code because if you don't know how to code, that could be a problem, you know, and, and that could lead to not having a job very quickly. So that's why I'm telling you guys to slow down. Don't ask, how can I get through a, a, a medical coding very quickly? Please don't ask me. Because to me, um, it, it diminishes our profession when people do that. When they try to pump out all these people, these credential holders, and yeah, they can pass a test, but when they get in the real world, they can't code. Well, no one trained me. No one is, is supposed to train you. This is a very autonomous field where we are training ourselves a lot. Is this unfair? Yes, it is. 
Uh, do I wish there were better teachers in these schools? Yes, I do. I'm the one who gets letters from the disillusioned students from these teachers that have been described as being horrible. There's no other way to describe them other than the fact that they have been not helpful to these students. But sometimes it's on the students too, because if you are not putting forth that effort to learn, that's a problem. And so again, guys, it's a two-way street. The teacher has to be able to teach and you have to be able to put the time in to learn. And for my folks that are asking me, how can I get through with the least amount of study time? Hey, if I only do an hour, is that good enough? No, guys, no. If you cannot commit to 20 hours per week of study time, you are wasting your time. Because getting through a program doesn't mean that you're going to be able to pass a certification exam. Passing a certification exam is just part of it. Okay? Then you have to get out and, and find a job. And again, you're going to be tested again. So if you're really serious about wanting to get into this field, it's not going to matter the fact that you don't have experience. What's going to matter is your knowledge. And yes, they're going to ask for experience. Everybody wants experience because quite frankly, the employers are lazy. Let's just call it what it is. They are. They are lazy and they don't want to have to train you. But what they don't seem to understand is somebody who with years of experience can also not really know, especially if they've only coded a certain clinic their entire career. Me, I have plenty of experience. <laughs> I've done everything except for like interventional radiology. That's, I've done everything else, everything else. My first coding assignment was uh, to code at a cancer therapy research center. So you wanna talk about being shoved into the deep end of the pool? Oh yeah, that's some advanced coding right there. You have to know what you're doing when you're coding uh, for these neoplasms thing and things like that. So those are the things that you need to consider. So if you are looking for the fast way, the short way, the shortcuts, I don't, don't, don't look for them here, guys. Don't look for them here because I don't have them. I do things the old fashioned way and I encourage people to do things the old fashioned way, which is do your flashcards, listen to the coding guidelines, record yourself reading the ICD-10 CM coding guidelines. They're in the front of the book. Most publishers put them in the front of the book. You can read the current guidelines. CMS has them downloadable for free, okay? You can go to the CMS website and download for free the ICD-10 CM 2022 coding guidelines or whatever year, <laughs> because these videos are gonna go on in perpetuity. So whatever year it is, you can definitely go to CMS and download those guidelines for free. Record yourself reading them, listen to them later on, listen to them in 10 minute or 15 minute or even 30 minute blocks. It doesn't take that you have to be constantly on studying for hours on end. I do not recommend going for more than one hour at a time when you're studying. So study for maybe 50 minutes, 5050, or maybe an hour and take a break and then come back to it. Because we as adults know that adults learn differently. Okay, and so when you, you hear me read this huge long list of things, and it is possible to learn it all, guys, um, I recommend programs that are 9 months, 12 months, or 18 months. Now, again, I'm not challenging anybody. Do not write me and say, well, I can finish it sooner than, okay, if you can, that's fine. And there's plenty of people who do, and there's plenty of people that say, I, I'm still successful. I don't know. I, I haven't met them personally, so I don't, I don't know their skill. I can't gauge. But at the same time, guys, if you want to take this seriously, take the time to learn it. Take the time to learn it. It's a lot of things. I just read all of those things uh, that you have to learn. So again, if you're wanting to do this fast, this is not something to learn fast. This is not something that you can learn fast. It takes years to cultivate this skill. And yes, you can get a broad range, like a broad stroke uh, knowledge base, right? So at least know your way around the coding guidelines, know your way, your, your way around the coding manuals as well. I've recommended before that you open up all of your books and flip each and every single page so that you look. You don't have to read everything, but you do have to know where everything is in the book. People will tell me, oh, I'm gonna tab all my books, I'm gonna write and, not, and, and highlight and do all these things. You don't need to, you don't need to. Because a chaotic book with all this writing, the book already has the answers. It doesn't need you to add anything to it. Doctors and scholars write these books. It doesn't need you to add anything to it. Trust me, they've covered everything. What you need to do is learn how to read them. Learn how to use them. And yes, I am very blunt on my channel, but it's because I want you guys to take this seriously. Think about this. 
If you don't get into medical coding, there's already a medical coder out there. Now, when you go visit your doctor, don't you want somebody who takes this seriously to be looking at your record and coding it appropriately rather than somebody who doesn't care or somebody who just learned really quickly and is just pushing through whatever the doctor has uh, because they don't know to look at the documentation and see, well, maybe the way they're describing this procedure is actually not this procedure code that they're selected. So let me look for a better code that will fit this. So that's what you have to think about, guys. It's very important. People go into bankruptcy all the time because of bad coding. I guarantee you there's some out there that there's some bill that was extra extraordinarily high that didn't even need to be. Or even the opposite, that it was low and it could have been higher. Now that provider just lost out on money. And there's a lot of providers that will say, oh, the coders don't know what they're doing, which I take personal offense to, but I can also see their point because there are some that just do not care and they want to just hurry up and get through rather than taking the time to study and figure this stuff out correctly. Because this stuff is serious, guys. It is. We are held and accountable for everything that we report. So that is something else that you need to think about. Again, this is not a field for people who just want to collect a check and go home. There's a plenty of other fields for that. Not this field. It's too intellectual. I'm just saying. But anyway, guys, I want you guys to be successful, to take the time to study. I have many other videos where I give my study tip videos. If you're in medical coding school, if you're trying to study on your own, you don't understand something, your teacher won't help you, look for a mentor, look for a tutor. I am a tutor myself. My rates are in the description box below. There's a ton of tutors on LinkedIn if you don't want me. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, get help. That's all I'm saying. If you don't understand something, don't be shy. Now is not the time to be shy. Get help. All right. Um, so that's it. I'm going to wrap this one up. But thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, if this video helped you, like, subscribe, and share. And I will see y'all next time. Bye.